this one, Idia, Atheist Reads Bible liter Christian Literature. I'm reading, Are You Thirsty? by John R. Rice. You get these at Sword of the Lord. Of course, you're not going to read the whole thing. The world cannot quench thirst. This world is thirsty. On the cross, the Lord said, I thirst. With the blood pouring from his wounds, his tongue thickened in his mouth. The sun shining down in the hot climate. Jesus was thirsty physically. But Jesus was taught taking the part of sinners, suffering as a sinner suffers. I thir meant the thirst of hell. The world is thirsty. Every man is thirsty. If you could see all the trouble and heartbreak, you would see the whole world as in rest. Under these, it says, fairies. And people are longing for what they do not have. This world is thirsty. Sometimes people do not know what they see and their hearts long for, but they are thirsty. People all around us think if they had money, they could, would be satisfied. The world has a famine, it is dry ground, and needs rain from God. God says, I will pour water upon him that's thirsty. John chapter 7, Jesus stood and cried on that last great day. If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verses 20, 37 38. Isaiah 55 1, the Lord invites me. Oh, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters that ye have no money. Come ye, buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. In the last chapter of Revelation, the Lord says again, and the Spirit and the bride come, say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let them that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The Bible is full of invitations to the thirsty. Those thirsty, let them come. I found this. God has answered for every legitimate desire. Not just a glass full, but floods. Are you thirsty? Do you want God to give you just a glass of water? He wants you to do more than that. He wants to do more than that. He wants to turn the hose on you. I will pour water upon him that's thirsty. Is just is it just a sip of water you ask? It, is it just is it like the rich man in hell who asked Lazarus, Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and pour his tongue? A lot of Christians are like that. They want just a drop of water. They don't expect to be happy in this life. They just want to get by. When I asked the preacher how he was getting along, he answered, I am as near happy as I can expect to be in this world. A preacher of the gospel talking like that one. God has an abundance. If you are thirsty, let him turn the hose on you. He will pour water on, on you who are thirsty and floods of water on the dry ground. Yeah. You know, if you tie the arm cloth and give and pray and pray, God's going to give you abundantly. Yeah, right. There are those who cannot understand how to be filled with the Spirit and be baptized with the Spirit. Well, He is filled inside and baptized outside. When God turns the hose off, you get plenty outside and inside. Many of us need the thirst after God until He pours out a fresh Spirit upon us. The freshness of the Spirit-filled life. Some Times of drought in Texas, West Texas, where I grew up, leaves is, leaves the sky like brass, the earth like iron, and the ground cracked with great fissure. Fissures. I have gone all over the land with all, an auger down, down. We would go trying to find water. Then we would tie a rope and ring and let it down 20 or 30 feet. Everything has gone dry in the whole country. We have hauling water for 90 heads of stock. The grass was burning, the fields were bare, even the cane was curling in the drunk brown. The drought in West Texas. It is a terrible happening, but a drought on your soul is worse. Are you suffering from suffering a soul drop today? The flood of rain make your life green again with the briskness of the spirit you used to have. Some Christians have no greenness in their lives. The Bible says a religious man, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also shall not wither, and whosoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalms 1 3. So if you're a Christian, you're saved. You know, everything you do, you're going to prosper. I know, it sounds stupid, it's not even true. Are you satisfied with what you have? Are you satisfied with what you have? And drink more, drink, drink, drop, drink and sink. Christian, you know, what is our duty? If we can have the power of the Holy Spirit, what are we to do then? Each should say, come help, God helping me, I am going to get thirsty. How does one get thirsty? By hard work, begin in the morning around 4.30 and work until sundown, loading a string of wagons with a pitchfork and you'll get thirsty. It would not long before your overalls are soaked, they will dry, but then you will want you will sweat some more and dry out again. Your clothes will begin to look salty, you will be bound to drink the water. Hard work is one way to get thirsty, and salt will make you thirsty. The Bible is like salt. We eat it faithfully and you will get thirsty. I will never forget what, when I was a boy, about 15, I read in chapter 2 of Acts, how at Pentecost, the power of joy came. 
and three thousand were saved in a day. I thought then, and I think so now. How wonderful that God Himself would come and get men and until they speak with power. Three thousand are saved in a day. Reading the Bible will make you thirsty. It's not sin to ask much when we pray. I hear people say we shouldn't meddle with God's affairs. We should ask so much nor expect so much. Oh, maybe it is not God's time. God wants us to come with hungry hearts and ask if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask you? Luke 11, 13. And how many Christians around the world are praying and begging God for water and food and are starving to death? Or watching their children starve to death? Think about that. Did you ever pray for God to help you pray right? How does that? How does He do that? The Holy Spirit of God prays for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Romans 8, 26. That is praying for the Holy Spirit to take charge of you, to move in you and fill you. I remember doing that when I was a Christian. I asked the Holy Spirit to help me pray. Let Jesus fill your empty soul with the water of life. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot to say in this little booklet. Feel free to like, subscribe, feel free to watch any of my other videos. Uh, you know, Are You Thirsty by John R. Rice. Sword of the Lord Publisher, swordofthelord.com. Thanks.